Hello friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype traits and GED match results of a Cromanion individual from Vladimirskaya Oblast in Russia. Uh, Sungir 1 is the sample name. Now, in terms of the time period this individual lived on, this individual obviously lived in the Upper Paleolithic, that's when Cromanions were a thing, but really uh, it's 32,000 to 30,000, I can't pronounce that word. <laughs> Uh, years before the common era, it's a long time before the common era. This individual lived in this region right here, uh, so right next to the city of Vladimir, very close to Moscow. Um, so sort of in between the Moscow and Nizhny Novgorod, right? It's it's pretty much the center of uh, Russia, the center of European Russia. Historical Russian cities are all right here. Uh, Suzdal should be right here, just a bit north of Vladimir. I think this is it. Yes, I think this is Suzdal. It's not showing up the name for some reason, but I think this is Suzdal right here. Uh, Pereslavl Zaleski, I know, is right here. So all of the important cities, like Muram is here somewhere. I think this is Muram. Uh, Rizan is right here as well. So all the important Russian cities that have been uh, kind of the foundation of the Russian um, state are all in this region. But this individual is anything but a Russian. This individual, in terms of his uh, appearance and his genetics, He's just very un-Russian. So let's explore him. He lived a long time before uh, my ethnicity has really uh, came about and formed. So first we're going to start with the ethnic calculator results. And with the ethnic calculator results, he is closest with my calculator. He's closest to Balshoi Leni Ostrov and Punjabi Jats. Uh, followed by that are Shahri Sakhtar individuals. There are some Khmerians, Neolithic individuals from Tajikistan. The reason he's so close to various South Asian and uh, South Central Asian groups is actually because he has a significant amount of South Asian admixture. And we can see this here uh, with the two way closest models. We can see he's getting more of a mixture of Ongia plus Slavic. Ongia are Andamanese Islanders who are kind of like, in a genetic point of view, they are extreme South Asians. So he's getting more of a mixture of these Ongia plus Slavs, uh, Finnish plus Ongia. There is uh, uh, there is um, BMAC plus Malta Boy. BMAC is. Um, Kind of the indigenous farmers of Central Asia who were also kind of South Asian shifted, and Malta Boy is an ancient North Eurasian who is once again uh, also pretty South Asian shifted. Uh, ancient North Eurasians in general have a very significant shift towards South Asia. There is Afontavagara tree plus Afghan medieval, which is kind of more of the same in my opinion. So it's just ancient North Eurasian plus uh, this South Central Asian. So it looks like there is definitely a South Asian shift in this Cromanion that's not found in modern Europeans. And we can explore his results with Eurogenes K13. As we can see here, uh, he's scoring 15% South Asian once again. This is one of the biggest components he scores. Uh, he is also scoring 5.5% Oceanian. Once again, Oceanian is a very exotic component. Uh, modern Europeans do not score this component. And let's see with the Oracle what kind of groups he's going to get modeled as. He is getting modeled as a mixture of Three quarters West German plus one quarter Austro Asiatic. Austro Asiatic uh, is once again a extremely South Eurasian group. It's uh, from a genetics genetical point of view, it's very extremely South Asian. So he's also scoring French plus Austro Asiatic. He's also scoring Danish plus Austro Asiatic. Uh, he's scoring West German plus Chenchu. Chenchu, I'm pretty sure, is a um, is a group or some kind of a tribe in South India. Maybe a tribe, maybe a caste. I'm not sure. I think it should be a no, I don't think it's a cast. Let's look it up. Uh, let's look it up. Chenchu. Yes, it's a, it's a tribe. Yeah, it's a Dravidian tribe. Uh, it's designated scheduled tribe in the Indian states of Andhra Pradesh. Tel Telangana. Telangana, I know, is the very south. Karnataka is also very south. Uh, Andhra Pradesh. I think it's. I think it's the south as well, but it's kind of like more of a central south. Let's look it up. Let's look up Andhra Pradesh. Um, maps. Are we gonna find anything? Yeah, that's this is where it is. Yes, yeah, so it is definitely very southern, a very southern state. So, uh, basically, this, this individual is a mixture of something European like, uh, with something really South Asian like. And this individual lived before uh, any of these groups, any of these European groups really were a thing. Uh, most of the European genetic drift that set Europeans apart from like South Asians and all the other. Uh, Eurasians has not been a has not existed at this point in time, right? So uh, this individual is ancestral to Europeans and uh, some other people outside of Europe, but mainly to Europeans. However, 
he is not a European because a lot of the European genetic drift he does not have. It's simply uh, after his time. All right, in terms of the haplogroup, his Y-DNA is C. Once again, Y-DNA C is extremely uncommon. It's a very uncommon haplogroup for uh, Europeans. You're not going to find Europeans with C, Y-DNA today. And now we're going to go ahead and explore his... Let me adjust my microphone real quick. Okay, We're going to go ahead and explore his results for Nashakot, like what kind of phenotype he had, what did he look like. Uh, so let's start with that. And with Nashakot, he is scoring darkest brown eyes. So it looks like he definitely has very dark, uh, very dark eye color. Uh, for hair color, he's got black hair. Once again, very dark hair, hair color. Uh, the mutations for light pigmentation were not a thing at the time this individual lived, but he does have some. We're going to explore them. I'm going to show you the light pigmentation variants he does have. Uh, he's predicted to have light brown skin, which seems to be pretty common for Cro-Magnons. Uh, all of the Cro-Magnon samples I've done so far has been predicted to have light brown skin. For hair texture, he's predicted to have wavy hair, also pretty common for Cro-Magnons, although uh, some of the other ones were predicted to have curly or kinky hair. So it looks like uh, with Cro-Magnons, it, kind of uh, it was kind of a mix between wavy and kinky and curly hair. Uh, whereas with modern Europeans, there's definitely no Europeans with kinky hair at all. So clearly we uh, sort of changed, our hair texture just sort of changed from being more curly and more kinky towards being more straight. In terms of the coloring variants, he does not have blue haplotype 1, definitely very dark, does not have blue haplotype 4. He does have two light color variants here in HERC2, which is actually pretty interesting. So he does have some light color variants in HERC2. Uh, he's got this genotype in, this is Oka2, by the way. <laughs> um, I titled it as HERC2, but it's Oka2. I'm not sure why I did that. I don't actually remember. I uh, like all of these. All of these are not HERC2. All of these are Oka2. So I'm not sure why I titled them as HERC2. I don't remember why. Maybe I just made a mistake, but it is what it is. So he's got some light color variants in Oka2. Um, he's got some light color variants in Asip, which is very interesting. Uh, he's even got some light color variants in SLC 45A2. And here. And here. And here. He's got some light color variants in IRF4. He's got some light color variants in this variation of Kilo G, which is, I think, pretty important for skin color. Uh, he's got some light color variants in this variation of Tyr, this variation of F. I don't really care about this gene. I just kind of added it there because I looked it up. And apparently it has some link to pigmentation. So I was like, okay, let me add this here. Uh, and he does not have any light color variants and MC1R. So definitely no predisposition to being uh, ginger. All right. Now let's go ahead and explore his polygenic risk scores and, if, and um, uh, what kind of illnesses he might have. So it looks like this individual has below average odds of schizophrenia, uh, slightly above average odds of type 2 diabetes, very high odds of Alzheimer's, very interesting. So the Alzheimer's is kind of interesting here. Um, below average odds of multiple sclerosis, uh, two risk variants for breast cancer out of 22, which is pretty typical. Nine out of 20 for testicular cancer, pretty typical. Zero out of 10 for celiac disease, pretty typical, really good to see. Zero for GSS out of 10, really good to see. Zero for Crohn's out of 14, really good to see. That's actually really, really good to see. Uh, and zero for Reifenstein's out of 10. Okay, really good to see as well. But five risk variants for Parkinson's out of 32. Now that's um, that's kind of bad. That's kind of um, unusual to see. So this individual has some predisposition, I think, to be to having Parkinson's based on this uh, on his genotypes here. But this might be it might be partially due to missed calls or problems with genotyping. So we don't really know for sure. What we do know for sure, this individual has a very high score for Alzheimer's. So we're going to explore that. All right, for the mental health section, it looks like he's got GG in Comte's Valmet variation, meaning warrior genotype in Comte. Um, we do not have his genotype in MAOA, so it looks like the only genotype that's relevant to warrior versus warrior uh, gene would be the Comte genotype. So he's a warrior, which means higher activity of the Comte enzyme and quicker breakdown of dopamine and um, advantages in stress resilience, but disadvantages in attention tasks because there is simply less dopamine in the system. Uh, he does not have any no-go learning variants in DRD2 pro in pro variation, which means higher number of dopamine due to in the brain and higher odds of schizophrenia. He's got this genotype in DRD2 once again, which leads to higher odds of, the, of schizophrenia once again. He's not genotyped for TAC1, so we can't know that, but and it would be good to know because TAC1 is relevant to Parkinson's. 
and it looks like he does not have long form 5 HTC LPR. He's got short form 5 HTC LPR. We're going to skip autism. I don't care about that. We're going to skip DDC. For lactose persistence, he does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation. Really, I mean, yeah, no, uh, no way would anybody from the upper Paleolithic have this mutation. It happened somewhere in the in the early Bronze Age. So, yeah, no, <laughs> nothing is surprising here. For the empathy gene, it looks like there is um, two variants for higher levels of empathy. Okay, so not a sociopath. For diabetes, it looks like he does not have type 1 diabetes. Really good to see. For hemochromatosis, okay, this is something of, it's a pattern. I'm seeing a lot of hemochromatosis, um, his 63 ASP, among these individuals from Sungir. It's kind of bizarre because Sungir 4 had it, Sungir 3 had it, and now Sungir 1 also has heterozygous genotype here. Uh, he's also a carrier for the H63D variant. I'm not sure, is it genuine? Is it tr is it like real? Or it's just a coincidence? I don't know. I mean, is it is it a coincidence and real? Or is it some kind of a problem with genotyping uh, with their chip that I'm seeing right here? Because it's just so weird that all three of them have heterozygous genotype here. Okay, interesting. So if we take this at face value, then yeah, this individual has one copy of this H63Z variant, but most likely doesn't have hemochromatosis unless he's also a C282Y variant carrier. All right, for Alzheimer's, he's got this genotype, which means two risk alleles for Alzheimer's in this variation of APOE. Interesting. Okay, so he's got, he's actually carrying risk alleles for Alzheimer's in APOE. So definitely much more likely to have Alzheimer's. Uh, as you can see here, it says 12 to 61 times higher odds of Alzheimer's than average. Uh, these variations also contributed to the score, to the polygenic score, and there's probably some more that aren't shown on the screen. So, uh, so he's not scoring like 12 times higher than average. He's scoring 3 point something, right? So, uh, these genotypes kind of counteracted or cancel out this polygenic score for this one. All right, for multiple sclerosis, it looks like he does not have any risk variants here. Really good to see for cardiovascular disease. Uh, Nothing is too interesting here. I think this, this looks like a big odds ratio. So here he's got a one and a half times increased risk of coronary artery disease. For myopia, we're going to skip it. We don't care. For miscellaneous section, no micropenis. Yes, I actually pronounced it. I'm not going to be censoring myself anymore when it comes to this word. I'm going to be pronouncing it in full. Uh, one fat gene variant and FTOs, RS99, 39609, high odds of obesity and sleep apnea. And he does not have photic sneeze reflex. And it looks like for EDAR, he's got a European genotype for EDAR, definitely not East Asian EDAR. Uh, this is different from the previous Cromanion I made videos on from Sungir, uh, who actually had, I think, CC genotype here. So the opposite of this in EDAR. All right, lower odds of cannabis induced psychosis. Very interesting to see this. This might be the earlier, because uh, the T allele here is the derived allele. So this might be one of the earlier samples in the world who have the T allele on, or who have, in this case, homozygous calls for the T allele, two T alleles. Very interesting to see. Um, he does not have any variants for albinism. He's not albino, and he's also not a carrier for Melanesian blonde hair variants. He does not have any risk variants for familiar Mediterranean fever. And it looks like he's got this genotype in MTHFR, which leads to 10 to 20% efficiency in processing folic acid. And it leads to higher odds for a variety of illnesses from autism to coronary heart disease. I'm not sure how truly, how, how big of a contribution this genotype truly has. But um, 10 to 20% efficiency in processing folic acid sounds pretty serious. All right. For testicular cancer, definitely does not have testicular cancer. Look at this. Six times reduced risk of testicular cancer. Uh, very good genotype to have. For leukemia panel, it looks like he does not have any risk variance for that. For rare diseases panel, no von Gerg's disease, not a carrier for variants for Bloom syndrome, no GSS. Uh, one risk variant for leprosy, but it's not so uncommon, so it's not really too big of a deal. Um, celiac disease, no risk variants for that, really good to see. For allergies, we're going to skip that. For androgen receptor gene, uh, no Reifenstein syndrome, all right. For Crohn's disease, uh, normal risk of Crohn's disease, really good to see. Uh, for Canavan syndrome, zero risk variants, really good to see. For HIV and AIDS panel, he does not have protective variants for HIV. So uh, in his case, it's actually really not that good. Uh, I'm not sure if these protective variants even existed in the upper Paleolithic. I'm not sure when, when they sort of developed and when humans started uh, to, uh, when, when, these, 
when these protective variants really took off. It might be after the Upper Paleolithic, in which case, uh, obviously, he wouldn't have them. And it looks like he does not have any risk variants for algerlinco dystrophy out of 16. Really good to see. And no risk variants for muscular uh, dystrophy myopathies. Really good to see here as well. So it's a pretty healthy individual. Uh, the only thing that's here that is sort of bad is his genotype for Alzheimer's. Uh, for hemochromatosis, this is really fishy. Uh, I'm not sure if I trust this, to be honest, because I'm seeing, I've seen at this point three chromanions from Sungir, and they all have heterozygous genotype here. It might be the result of some kind of faulty genotyping method. That's what I think. But it, it could be just a coincidence, so I don't know. Um, tell me what you think in the comments. You can download this file in 23andMe format from the link which is in the description of the video, and leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. Goodbye.